you're a good doctor. You graduated from medical school. You've worked in hospitals. You've passed the AMC part one, one of the most difficult computer adaptive exams in the world. You know your medicine. So why is the pass rate for the AMC clinical exam so low? Why do so many experienced, intelligent doctors fail this exam on their first, second or even third attempt? The answer is frustrating, but it's simple. It's because the AMC clinical exam is not testing what you think it's testing. You're studying for an exam of a medical knowledge, but the AMC is grading you on an exam of medical performance. You've been studying for the wrong test. You've fallen for something I call the performance trap, and it's a classic example of the principle known as Goodhart's law. Goodhart's law. When a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. What does that mean? It means the original measure of a good doctor is your clinical competence. But for us, the target has become passing the exam. And in focusing on the target, memorizing textbook lists, watching a thousands of videos, we've lost sight of what's actually being measured, your systematic performance in an Australian context. Today, I'm going to show you the evidence for this hidden curriculum, why your textbooks are failing you and the black box feedback system that proves I'm right. And by the end, you will understand exactly what you need to change in your preparation. To understand this, we need to look at the educational theory. In medical education, there is a famous framework called Miller's Pyramid. It's a pyramid with four levels that describes clinical competence. At the bottom, you have nose. This is pure textbook knowledge. What are the causes of chesting? You can list them. Next, you have nose how. This is applying that knowledge. You see a patient's ECG and you can interpret it. This is what your AMC part one MCQ tested. The third is shows how. This is demonstrating your skills in a controlled artificial setting. This is the OSCE. This is the AMC clinical exam. And at the top, you have does. This is what you do in real day-to-day -day practice on the ward. Here is the problem. The AMC clinical is testing you at the shows how level, but most of us are still studying at the nose level. You are memorizing lists of differentials, but the exam is testing how you perform an examination. You are memorizing drug doses, but the exam is testing how you counsel a patient about starting that drug. The textbook can't teach you shows how. This shows how level has hidden curriculum with unspoken rules. And after my journey and talking to dozens of candidates, I've seen three fail points that blindside IMGs. First, paternalism versus partnership. In many of our home countries and medical schools, the doctor is the authority. We see the patient, we find the problem, we tell them the plan. You have high blood pressure, you must take this tablet. In the Australian system, that is an immediate fail. The model here is shared decision making. You are a medical advisor, not a medical authority. You have to present options, discuss the pros and cons of each, and ask the patient what they think. You are a partner in their care, not a director. Second, the silent thinker versus the clinical narrator. You are in a high pressure station. A patient is unconscious. You are standing there, silently checking their pulse, checking their pupils, thinking through your differentials, meningitis, hypoglycemia, head injury. In your head, you are being a brilliant clinician. But to the examiner, you are silent. You look lost, panicked and unsafe. An examiner cannot grade your thoughts. You must think aloud. You have to narrate your clinical reasoning. Okay, I'm approaching the patient, ensuring the scene is safe. I am checking for a response and getting no reply. I am now checking for breathing and a carotid pulse. 
he is breathing. My immediate priority is to manage his airway, get IV access and check a blood sugar. I'm thinking this could be metabolic, traumatic or intoxication. That narration is what gets you the marks. Silence gets you a fail. Third, the generic doctor versus the Australian doctor. This SWOT is subtle, but it's critical. You are being graded on your ability to function in this specific system. You don't just prescribe a drug. You check the AMH, the Australian Medical Handbook for the correct dose. You don't just check costs. You check if it's on the PBS. You don't just refer. You hand over to the medical registrar using the ISBAR format. You don't just counsel a smoker, you offer the quick line and discuss NRT. It's the specific local language that proves you you are safe to be let loose in their hospital. Now you don't have to just take my word for this. How do I know the exam is about this hidden curriculum and not just your knowledge? Because the feedback system itself is the ultimate proof. The way that gives you your results tells you everything. You need to know about what they value. Let's start by looking at a system that is educational. When I did my PLAP2 in the UK, this is the kind of feedback you'd get. Look at this. The GMC gives you a detailed actionable breakdown. If you failed, it tells you why. Here, disorganized or unstructured consultation or shows poor time management, taking too long over some elements, does not appear to develop rapport, including use of stock phrases, or may have asked a series of questions but not listened to the answers. This is a real feedback. This is educational. It's a roadmap that tells you exactly what to fix. It's designed to help you improve. Now let's look at the AMC clinical results. This is what you get. It's a black box. You get a bar graph and a fail. Now look at this. This is the smoking gun. This is an actual AMC result for a dizzy patient station. This candidate failed. But look at the scores. Approach to patient or relative 4 out of 4. This candidate was perfect. They were polite. They were empathetic. They built rapport. They were a nice person. But look at the other scores. History 1 out of 4. Patient counseling or education 1 out of 4. What does this tell the candidate? Almost nothing. It doesn't tell them why the history was a 1. Was it unstructured? Did they miss red flags? Did they not use the right Australianisms? This is the proof of hidden curriculum. The PLAP2 system wants to teach you how to improve. The AMC system simply tests if you already know the rules. This candidate's politeness didn't save them because they didn't show how they were a safe clinician. The official feedback system is pass or fail gate. And it's not designed to teach you. You are left to try and figure out these rules on your own. And that, that is why I am making these videos. I want to be 100% transparent with you. I am not an expert, nor am I saying that I have mastered the entire Australian healthcare system. But in my journey here in Australia, and after talking to so, so many AMC part two candidates, I have felt these exact frustrations. I have seen how this hidden curriculum and this black box feedback system leave good smart doctors feeling lost and defeated. In this gap, the gap between knowing medicine and knowing how to perform as an Australian doctor. That I want to help you up close. This is why I am building a new premium video library right here on Medlin Studio called The Confident Clinician. Yes, I will be uploading all those deep dive clinical videos, how to do a sleek pediatric exam, ONG counseling stations, 
and the five minute neuro exam, the IS vast handover, but they will be all built on this foundation, teaching you the system, not just the textbook. All of this high value content will be under the paid membership here on YouTube. The full membership library is launching very soon. Do check back at the end of December or early January. That's when the join button will be active. And that's when there will be adequate videos uploaded to dive straight in. My goal is to decode this black box for you. So you can pass your exams and more importantly, feel confident and competent from very first day on the wards. Thank you so much for watching.